Hi dear, I am Dr. Praveen Kaur Gupta, and this videos are a series only made for you. Learning histopathology is never easy, and you have always been so worried about it, but no further here on. So in this series that I am starting, I am looking for the understanding of the histology first, and based on the normal histology, I will talk about histopathology, and not only that, we'll also have the entire features clinically and how to diagnose them. Well, guys, if you're ready with it. Ensure that you watch the video completely, and before you go to it, like the video and subscribe to my channel. Let's start it discussing and learning the view era of histopathology. A very important topic in the PGMEs as well as the second year is actually thyroid carcinomas. Not only important, but it's also very confusing. In this video, we'll talk about yet another topic that is thyroid carcinomas. Let's first classify it in a normal form. A thyroid carcinoma is of four types. Yes, there is papri, there is a papri variety, there is a folklore variety, there is melbury variety, and there is anaplastic variety. Well, what happens is, if you look at these varieties, the problem is that the most common of them is the papri carcinoma. And papri carcinoma occurs usually in the young age and has a solitary nodule. Now, that becomes an important finding. Also remember, this is actually comprising of 85% of all the thyroid carcinomas. Then comes Polkler, 5 to 15 percent. Melbury is around 5 percent. The same variety is also anaplastic. It's a rare variety too. Now, very important to understand is this carcinomas. The carcinoma you all know they actually spread by well, the carcinoma they actually spread by the lymphatic load because any carcinoma goes by lymphatic load. But what happens a follicular carcinoma, especially follicular carcinoma, that is what spreads by a hematogenous root. So what happens among all these cancers? What you must remember is the follicular carcinoma is what goes by hematogenous root. Look at the genes also. So, BRAF, BRAF, and the red gene is involved in the papri carcinoma. The RAS and PI3 cancer carcinoma, sorry, genes are involved in the melbury carcinoma. And the red gene, including in the MEN2 syndrome, is what you see in melbury carcinoma of thyroid. Now, if you look at the next one, what is papri carcinoma? Look at the name. Someone has called this papri carcinoma because normally a follicle is round in shape, right? But what happens in papri carcinoma is the finding completely changes. And what happens, look at this papillary productions, look at the papillary productions in this gland. This huge papilla, look at this complete papilla here. This whole papilla is called as papillary productions. And inside this papilla, which was actually a follicle, this scanty colloid layer, this scanty colloid layer. Well, the gross morphology also comprises of such papillary productions from the histology of the gland. This is the big histology, this all are, sorry, not histology, sorry, the gross morphology, so papillary productions in the glands. So taking a biopsy, it shows the papillary productions as you see here. This complete is a papilla. What is papilla? A finger-like productions. Papilla 1, papilla 2, papilla 3, papilla 4. These all are the papillary productions. Well, if you look at the higher magnification of this gland, what it shows is, it shows a huge number of these all are the follicle cells. Now look at this follicle cell. These are all looking white. Round, round, round. But these all have white color inside it. Normally, if you expect, a follicle cells or any Neoplastic cells should never be round in shape. But look here, the, look here, these all are the round and whitish colored tumor cell. A tumor cell looking white is not useful because normally what you know is a tumor cell should show you hypochromatism, pleomorphism, and high NC ratio. But what has happened here is if you look at this, well, she is a she is actually called as little orphan Annie. Little orphan Annie is an English comic character, and look at her eyes. Her eye doesn't have eyeballs. And similarly, this histopathology of the papillary carcinoma does not have the hypochromatic nucleus. Instead, they look like the eyes of this little girl who doesn't have eyeballs. So those white color area cells has been compared to her eyes. Well, not to say it's the eyes, yes. So these eyes is actually what is called as a pseudo-inclusion. Actually, what are they? A pseudo-inclusion is a cytoplasmic invagination into the nucleus because of which it appears white in color. Now, why is it called a pseudo-inclusion? Because Normally, what we expect is any cell should have a dark color inclusion, like it should be a uh, base of inclusions, like it should be base of inclusions. But what has happened here is it is actually what it's a pseudo inclusion because it shows a white colored area. So, yes, four findings you should appreciate in a papillary carcinoma it can be a papillary productions like this, it can be a pseudo orphan, uh, so pseudo inclusion, also called as orphan any eye nuclei. These all findings are highly sensitive of papillary carcinoma. I hope you like this video. I was able to explain to you the normal anatomy, histopathology, and you could understand the entire thing out. If you really like this video, 
and ensure that you put your comments in the section below so i can put more videos to you in the upcoming days waiting for your comments god bless you all keep hustling keep studying and do the best of your abilities bye bye